Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Noon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray, and today I'm joined by my fantastic uh, co-hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. Um, but we are most blessed today to be joined by our guest, uh, Tiago Higgs, uh, a CG artist, computer-generated imagery, that stands for, uh, and Bitcoiner living in the UK currently. Um, so first off, Tiago, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, girls are asleep and this is the uh, night shift. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm happy to happy to hear it. Um, but yeah, I guess the first question for you, obviously as a Bitcoiner, um, well, I suppose art, artistic and imagery side of things and Bitcoin can join together, but they're not like obvious links. So I guess what was your life like um, before Bitcoin? And then how and when did you discover Bitcoin? That should always kick us off. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's going to throw me on a rant for a, a couple of minutes. <laughs> so, yeah, so like um, classic middle class in Portugal, um, probably the worst student or top five worst students of pretty much every school I've been. And then comes a little turning point where I'm around 16. Uh, we are living in a big farm with two houses in it, big houses. And uh, we, get, we get rug pulled and my mom goes to jail for five years. So my mom goes to jail for five years with that rug pull. And my father is nowhere to be seen. So it's just me and my grandparents at that time. Uh, little control over a 16 year old. At that point, I'm literally uh, more free than we are today. <laughs> by today's standards <laughs> i literally could do whatever so yeah uh from from sleeping in benches at night uh to hanging out with people that uh, today are in jail and things like this i somehow managed to come out on the other side of that and um uh and then i moved to the uk eventually when my mom came out of prison so when I moved to the UK, my grandfather gets cancer and he's a very curious type of guy or was a very curious type of guy. So at that point, he starts going on this because he's limited on life at this time. People tell him he has like two years, something like this. He goes on this uh, frantic chase for everything that he wants to learn. And I go to Portugal on holidays and I'm in the car with him and he asks me, well, he's looking frail and everything else because like chemotherapy and all this nonsense. And he tells me uh, if I heard about Bitcoin. <laughs> so he, in, you know, in the chase for answers to stuff at the age of 70 something during his cancer uh, thing, found Bitcoin. <laughs> I'm not as I'm not exactly uh, sure, but as far as I'm concerned, I've tracked back the time when that was. I think Bitcoin was around eight hundred dollars, and obviously, <laughs> I was too well. I wasn't too young, but I was, I was still in that mindset that everything is bullshit. Uh, if I, uh, you know, ego was all over the place. So he tells me this thing in the car, and I tell him, "No, nah, that's bullshit. That's just internet bullshit." You know, like classic you've seen it i've seen it uh it, like, well i've said it so i told him like yeah that's internet bullshit i, I don't know like until you can i think i threw i actually think i threw him the classic well if you can't buy anything it's nothing <laughs> i think now looking back it's like what the fuck i can't believe i said that one uh but yeah it's like <laughs> i think I, I i gave him that one and then uh things went on i would came back to London, he eventually passed. And a friend of mine that I know for the longest, it's the longest person I know, besides that's not a family member. We met each other when we were one year old and we've been together uh, as friends since. He introduced me to Bitcoin. Hey, are you interested? You know, at that time I was a bit more um, receptive and uh, I just took it all in. He just gave me the lead. And the rabbit hole started unfolding. The fucking branching starts to go everywhere. You start buying all the books, watching all the podcasts. That was at, um, uh, Bitcoin was at the 3K bottom when that happened. 
So actually, I missed. I missed get. I you know I didn't get wrecked in 2017, so that's not too bad. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and I started on the bottom. Um, but yeah, at that point, I took it all in. I started buying the books. I started reading everything. I got you know involved, and uh, I got involved in. Well, I got involved in Twitter actively just later on. Um, I was deep in the Instagram game. I wasn't too worried, you know, like how it ramps up, the rabbit hole ramps up as you're like getting into it. And it kind of, it's exponential. At some point you, you figure you don't have enough time to learn everything in the period of time that you have. And just that you wake up earlier and you go to bed later and you just keep on reading. And um, yeah, I guess, Nowadays, uh, it's, um, yeah, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, yeah, I guess it's the usual speech. Uh, Bitcoin did change a lot, like, uh, of aspects around my life uh, today. Yeah. It's interesting, man, because, like, you um, you said you got into some, like, you know, rough, rough situations, rough stuff, but then you obviously made it through to the other side, lucky enough to do so kind of thing. Like, what, what do you think it was that made that made it that way, right? Like, you're, you're different to others. I'm sure other people you knew probably didn't make it through and you know I, i've got friends who got into some tough stuff when you're kids and you, you know for whatever reasons they don't like uh do you reckon it was like your family influence maybe or, or what was it do you think that or maybe just like a natural like uh, passion for something in you what, what was it you think that like made you get through to the other side yeah that's a fun one because it's um uh <laughs> this is like this is when it gets a bit funny in terms of like personal uh, stats i'd say or people, or most people find this a bit weird, but even though I was sleeping on the streets once in a while, or a security guard on a security on some club would hear me tell my friends that I didn't have money to go home and he would literally hand me over some money so I could go home because I, I would go out at night late and I couldn't go back home because I didn't have any money and things like this. Um, it was five years my mom was in jail. I never got, I, I hung out with all kinds of people. Again, people that are in jail today, people that killed other people, things like this. Also great people that I, I still hang with today. But I never got to drink alcohol. I never did any single drug. Arguably, I uh, was a little, uh, I don't know if the word is correct, like a vandal in a way I, I destroyed some personal property and things like this but it's funny how i uh the idea that i'm always on the contrary i always if people try to throw me in one direction real hard i immediately go the other one and that could go very bright or very wrong <laughs> it turns out that being surrounded by people that were always you know doing drugs getting drunk this and that the more they were pushing the more i roamed in the opposite direction and that's been like, a, uh, I'm 37 now. I still have not drank alcohol. I still have not smoked anything. I still did not do, well, I, this year I got into uh, psilocybin and stuff like this. So now at 37, I, I wouldn't even consider those things. Like, I mean, that shit grows on the floor. It's like, <laughs> it's like, leave me alone with that stuff. So it's like, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's been always a push on the, uh, to the opposite direction. And the school is the same thing. The, the, the school has a sense of enforcement where like I'm being told that I need to be there and I need to do the best there if I want to be successful. Even at that point, like um, I've, I've, I, well, that's one of the reasons I became one of the worst students in every school I was like, because I, I felt resistance to that. I don't want to do this now. I don't want, I'm just interested in creative stuff. I don't want to learn maths. I don't want to learn any of this nonsense. Um, so yeah, it's like that even today, even uh, as soon as Circus 19 kicked in and people were trying to force me to stay at home, force me to like put me, I felt like put, put against the corner. So obviously <laughs> my natural thing is, well, this always worked for me to go the opposite direction. So I'm going to do exactly the same. <laughs> to date so obviously <laughs> i'm fully unvaccinated and all those things uh so it's like 
it's always it's been always like this it, it came that it, it came that I, I trust it I trust it these days and I can see uh, my daughter doing exactly the same things now she's she has this type of resistance and I, I keep trying to talk to my wife like we, we don't want to take that away the the little bit ungovernable right it's got to remain you cannot you cannot take that away <laughs> important don't take away the passion i guess right like and i, and I yeah. suppose it's probably i think it was one of the things so i've noticed a little bit of that in myself a little bit like not crazy amounts but a little bit and that's like one of those things that uh, attracted me to bitcoin a little bit um when i first started learning about it as well I was like hey okay this is like the alternative to a system that i think is corrupt and screwed up and to a monetary system that i think is bound to fail and as banks can do things that if you or I did, it would be, you know, we'd be imprisoned for life, <laughs> you know, kind of stuff. And um, <laughs> so that kind of stuff really well, didn't gel with me at all. And so it kind of pushed me in that, that direction. Um, so I can see how you, um, if you have that, that kind of personality, I can see why you would move into being interested in Bitcoin, why it would kind of catch on to you. And like, you'd be like, oh, this is interesting, you know, go down this. Because not many people in Bitcoin either are really pushing anyone or forcing anyone to do anything. It's more kind of like, a, here's the information, uh, screw you if, you don't, if you're not interested, basically. Um, <laughs> it feels like a lot of the time, right? Um, <laughs> so, which I think does well for that kind of train of thought. I guess like um, something else is interesting because obviously, it's good to get like an understanding of, of who you are and, and kind of the, the journey you've had. Like, how did you, well, first off, I suppose it'd be good if you could tell people, okay, like as a com, as like someone who does computer generated imagery and, and, and animation and, and things like that, like, what do you, what, what is that? What do you do? Right. Like on like a day-to-day -day basis um, as a, as a creator, yeah. a creative mind. And then like, how, how, when did, when did that happen? Like, how did you do that? Where does that fit into the story? Yeah, like I guess I guess I'm one of those cases where I uh, it was by uh, observation. My father was very creative, even though I only met him like around when I was ten. Uh, it was just right on time uh, to figure out that I was just as creative and as spontaneous as he is. He he was also a three D guy back then. He was exp it was at the beginning of three D software and stuff like this, and he was exploring with it. He was deep into uh, uh, photography as well, which I am still today. <clears throat> uh, my mom was a TV producer. So <laughs> like I was surrounded by this, uh, by this environment. So my mom would take me to the TV station where she was working at the moment in Portugal. And I would get to go there. So I, I'm not even, uh, I'm around 16 at the time and I'm changing tapes at the TV station and doing graphics in some weird computers that like that, that stuff probably doesn't exist anymore today. So yeah, I was really, I, I was really just wrapped in that environment for many years. My, my mom worked as a TV producer for many years after that. Uh, and I got to follow it close and it, it just got a, yeah. Then I started doing web design. Uh, I studied mostly web design and then a little bit of print. And then it evolved into 2D animation, 2D graphics. And then it eventually 2D graphics was not enough anymore. I needed more 3D. I needed 3D, essentially. I needed to be able to spin stuff. <laughs> so then comes 3D. Uh, so it, and then today, is, it's now been 12 years since uh, the whole thing started. But um, uh, yeah, that's. It started in Portugal, but I only really worked in Portugal for three months. That's the reality of it. I, I, I worked in, I got out of school when I managed to get out of school. <laughs> Finally, I worked for three months. I came to London for a concert, uh, Bring Me The Horizon back then when I was still listening to that stuff. <laughs> I, I came back and I, I got back to Portugal and I was like, fuck this. I'm going. See ya. I literally went home. I didn't even tell my boss I was leaving. I was like, see ya, I'm going to London. One month later, I moved with 700 pounds in my pocket. And I got to make it happen with 700 pounds. <laughs> so, so between jumping Impressive. from, yeah, jumping in London is like, you can't pay you like two drinks. Doesn't get you far. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I maybe gets you half a night out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so like i i uh yeah i i'm thankful to all my friends that i was able to hide in their bedroom for 24 hours while uh 
so landlords wouldn't be able to see me and things like this. Uh, yeah, it wasn't easy, but then, you know, I, I found my first job. And from there, I mean, it's just, you, you, you know, you, you get hungry and, uh, but I wasn't very, I wasn't very solid with finance. It's just like probably most of us, like until you know Bitcoin, most of us are not very understanding of economics and finance. It's, it's, it's Bitcoin that starts pulling that thread of inflation, how much you're losing in reality and things like this. So that, that only came later. I was just wasting all my salary in nonsense. Well, maybe, yeah, well, I've always been quite measured. I, I buy a lot of tech and I still did back then. Tech that fe- gets me to learn my craft further, right? But um, yeah, uh, eventually, eventually I capitulated. <laughs> I capitulated and I had to come back to Portugal for two years. I had to tap out. You have to put your ego aside. Um, You're going to be surrounded by a bunch of uh, pricks, like most of us are when we're young, that are going to tell you that you failed and so you thought it was going to be easy, you know, this type of nonsense. You know who they are. You trim the fat and you try again. Move to London again after two years and made it. Now it's uh, this is the second run, which is like ten, uh, uh, eight years now. So yeah, you just try again. You just go for it again. That's my that's my thing. Yeah, I was just curious as as an artist, um, have you ever had any of your clients to actually pay you in Bitcoin? Well, I probably I probably shouldn't say this, but yeah, breed love. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell, us, tell us more. Tell us more. Tell us about that. It's, 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 it's an interesting like place where your work could cross over with Bitcoin, right? Like. You know, so it's very interesting to hear about. So tell us about that project. Yeah, look, I let, let, let me give credit where it's due. Like, you know, the whole DeFi nonsense and the whole uh, shitcoin movement and all these things. One thing's for sure. Most of it is scams and nonsense, but those guys actually put a lot of effort into graphics. You see a lot of exploration in graphics in the DeFi nonsense world. Um, the websites have all these 3D animations on them and they create all these videos. But in Bitcoin, uh, in Bitcoin, I don't, I, I don't see none of that. So um, actually, I see the opposite. I see everything is very clip artish. So I like, I forgot his name, but there's a guy that created a little documentary that he released last month, uh, uh, The Rise of Bitcoin and the Great Reset, some little documentary like this on YouTube. And it's just, the graphics are a little bit, the information is good, but the graphics are all very clip art. It's just like, you know, people want to see Netflix vibe. People got used to a standard, right? That they look at and, and it feels important. It feels high standard and gives them confidence on what they're watching. And if you see some clip art moving around, it puts a lot of people off. <laughs> so you, you get on a website, you see all these DeFi colors and 3D animations and stuff. It pulls you in. If you go on a website and it looks like some dark web nonsense, it's just, it's not going to cut it. So, you know, I texted the guy and I told him, look, next time you do a documentary, I don't want to see none of this clip art bullshit again. I want to, I'll help you out. We, we find a way, but no more clip art bullshit on Bitcoin. So, you know, I had a call with the, I had a chat with the um, with the Bitcoin magazine and to try and help with some stuff as well. So it's just uh, trying to help who I can. This is not. Uh, I, I don't even charge my professional rates to to, the, to these projects because um, this is something I enjoy it and it's a side gig. I, I, it's something I do in overtime on my spare time so it's it's more fun I, I want to have fun with it you already mentioned that um you do not really you know dabble into shit coins but are you not you know fascinated by nfts and how you you can apply your um your crafts you know into the you know apply to the nft space i did create nfts in the past <clears throat> when the thing came out when the thing came out i created um like, uh, well, it's not that I really created, I, as an artist, you're always, you, or you should be creating personal projects all the time because the personal pro- nowadays, my clients don't want to really see so much what I do professional. 
professionally. They want to see the stuff I do when I'm on my own at home, creating my own stuff. Cause that's when I'm fully myself creating something without constraints and stuff from other, from clients and things. And um, yeah, I had created a few videos for myself and I was like, well, let me try and NFT the shit out of this. So I put it online and I was shocked. I was shocked that someone bought the fucking videos. It's like, you can't believe it until they actually sell one of those things. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, this is literally something I did for fun on my like spare time. And some dude comes around here and uh, buys me this thing. And I'm like, oh my God. But then, yeah, I got paid in that fucking shit coin. Yeah. And I, I, could, I couldn't do it more than three times, honestly. I've done it three times. And then I was like, no, I can't do it. I bought Bitcoin with it. And the amount of work interacting with the environment that I don't feel I belong in, uh, even though it's art, yes. But I don't, I don't feel I belong in the whole ecosystem of the ethereum thing it's not it doesn't mean anything to me so i eventually stopped doing it after like three little videos is it that you don't really see value in nft dude okay i can understand you personally not liking no no one to interact with no ethereum but do you actually see value you know in the nft ecosystem do you something do you think it's something that you know people should latch on to but it's not for you personally i think it's the second one it's not for me it might it's, it's obviously for a lot of people as we can see, it's like, uh, but it's not for me. I, it doesn't even, it doesn't even cross my mind to buy uh, a JPEG. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's crazy. I don't, uh, I, I don't know. Like, I, on top of this, look, you're missing out on something. Like, probably not you, but a lot of people are missing out on something. Like, I know what it takes to create something something with proof of work <laughs> okay <laughs> and the vast majority of of these nfts and stuff there is zero proof of work involved there is like it's all this but you know this uh what's this these guys uh, um scarcity uh, scarce yeah right they, they create bitcoin art and sell it but like actual physical stuff they actually uh, a brecky for a uh, brecky the guy from Swan goes on uh, and carves in marble, big like structures and eyes and things like this. Okay, I get it. That I get it. Uh, but like most of these JPEGs I see, I mean, I know how long it takes to create something. It's like a bunch of it. The vast majority of this is a, it's a slap comp in Photoshop and uh, you, you throw it in there and you hope for, <laughs> and you pray someone buys it. I can't understand it. It's fair. It's just, you know, I guess people are, are chasing some chasing profits, I guess. I mean, it's not, um, it's not why I'm in this. Um, I want to uh, dissolve the state. <laughs> so, and it's not NFTs that are going to take me there. So that's it.